Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Got something a little bit unique today. It's a standard manufacturing S333 Thunderstruck. And it's a volley fire weapon. So first thing let me do is pop open the cylinder so that you can see all the little holes for the 22 Magnum, because that's what this is chambered in, are empty. But if I turn it around to the business end, it's got two barrels. Now it is volley fire, meaning that when you pull the trigger, this long weird little trigger that we'll talk about in a bit, it fires two rounds at once, but it is not considered to be an NFA by the ATF. They've actually got an ATF letter on this. This is just a regular revolver. Trying to navigate the nuances of how one thing is NFA and the other isn't, leave that up to the lawyers. The ATF letter basically says you can walk into any gun store and legally buy this and take it home, the same as if you were buying a Smith & Wesson or a Ruger. So there's nothing NFA or restricted about this above and beyond any restrictions that would exist on anything else. This is, as I mentioned, chambered in 22 Magnum. And, you know, I still kind of stick to that uh, rimfire. 22 or any of the rimfires are generally not a good choice for home defense or self-defense over center fire, mainly focusing around the reliability of the ammo. But something like this or any 22 revolver kind of mitigates that a little bit because you can just keep pulling the trigger and if a round doesn't go off, the next one most likely will. And a lot of times if you hit the first one a second time, it'll go off. So guns like this really are good for get off me guns or last ditch guns or ankle guns, the type of thing that you would not have as your primary EDC but something that you would fail over to as a backup or in those situations where it's either this or not carry. You know, there are certain situations that you, with the way you're dressing and everything else, you may have no other choice. So if you're going to carry a rimfire, something like this over an automatic, let's say like a Ruger Mark series, would be definitely a good choice. Weighing it about 18 ounces, it's relatively light and even fully loaded, it's not going to be heavy because 22 Magnum is not a heavy round. And it has a whopping inch and a half barrel. And unlike an automatic, which would include the chamber, it's measuring just from the back of the forcing cone to the muzzle. And it looks like they've added about a quarter inch to improve accuracy, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But the original gun, and this is the box it comes in, you see the original gun, the barrels ended just a hair outside of the molded frame. And the new one, the barrels protrude noticeably. And that's the little extra length they gave. What we found from an accuracy perspective is, first off, this isn't a bullseye gun. This isn't the gun that you're going to go try to challenge Jerry Mikulik and show him, you know, who's the boss. Not that you probably even could if you wanted to. But if you did, you wouldn't do it with this. You'd, you'd get a, a regular revolver. But what we did do is we tested it at a couple different distances. We tested it at about 12 yards, our typical shooting range, for which kind of represents a kind of an average home defense or self-defense scenario. And then we brought it in around five yards. And what we found is it was consistently inconsistent. It would space the two rounds, the two hits about that far apart. So it's kind of hard to do this with the camera, but about that far apart. It typically shot high, but every once in a while it would shoot dead on. So as far as aiming it and expecting to get a consistent result, not necessarily an option. Now, on their website, they do specifically call out two different am ammos. One is the CCI MaxiMag, kind of a standard in quality ammo, and a PMC variant that is also, PMC tends to be a little pretty good, it's just dirty. We didn't have either of those, so we were using Arms Core, but, and it was still a 40 grain. All the ammo they, rep they recommend is a 40 grain, and that's what we were using. I don't know if we would have gotten any more consistent results with the recommended ammo or not, but what we did find is it appeared to be the right barrel, tended to not stabilize well, intended to keyhole. And I'm believing it was the left barrel that did tend to stabilize and you know, put the round fairly straight through the target. But what we did find is shooting at a, at a torso, a standard torso size target at 12 yards, aiming at center mass, we could do an entire wheel and have all the projectiles somewhere on that torso. You know, not your typical, you know, core out the bullseye type groups, but in a defensive scenario, you're going to put unpleasant little holes somewhere that the, the uh, threat is not going to be wanting to have little holes put. So it does work. When you brought it into five yards, 
it's still kind of shot high and it was still kind of inconsistent, but of course it was a little bit tighter. Being more of a back up or get off me gun, that's actually better accuracy than I've gotten in a lot of other things like this that I've reviewed. That you could actually really shoot this at 12 yards and hit something as opposed to having them go wildly in all different directions. These, we've looked at these in the past and not actually ever really been able to find one to pick one up to try to do a review on it. And we had mentioned in a prior video that we joined Big Daddy Unlimited. They're not sponsoring us or anything, but we did set up an affiliate link. If you choose to join and you go through the link, yeah, it'll help the channel out a little bit, but it'll be the same price for you. But what I found with them is not only did they have this in stock, where no place else did, they had it uh, about 40 bucks under MSRP. MSRP on this is 429 and the red one, they actually make this in red, was 480 and they had it in the 380 390 territory. So right now, the, there is kind of an advantage to checking them out because you can actually get stuff. Now, their site is kind of hard to navigate, it's kind of unpleasant, but if you spend enough time with it, you, you can probably find what you're looking for more likely than finding it on the typical sites. Beyond that part of it, once we got the thing, found a few issues. One issue I'm going to do, I'm going to put up a screen and you can see on the cylinder, it appears that the uh, finish is badly damaged like it was badly damaged in transit but it actually I put some I took oil on a patch and I was able to scrub it off the interesting thing about that is it did come off and you can see the cylinder is actually pretty nice you can see up here at the front there's a little bit of that same kind of look and this pretty much aligns with the cylinder so this is really the blast from the plasma from the forcing cone but you can even see some of it still remaining here and I've been scrubbing and cleaning now, I don't know if I'm removing another finish, so this is actually what the finish is supposed to be and I'm removing it or vice versa, but it wasn't consistent. So in, in the end, the finish was all blotchy and patchy and it really looked bad on the cylinder, but the cylinder cleaned up and the body is cleaning up and underneath it, you know, whatever that is that I'm removing, you can even see it around this pin, whatever it is that I'm removing reveals underneath it a decent looking finish. So I'm not sure what got on it or what happened to that if it's really intended to be an actual outer finish, but the finish on this was very inconsistent, which kind of surprised me. Standard manufacturing has been around for a while. They do make a lot of things. They make like a DP-12. It's a bullpup shotgun because those are the thing. Everybody's making a bullpup shotgun right now. And of course they make unique things. So theirs is a double barrel. They make a AR style shotgun that kind of looks like a blend between an AR and an AK. They make some regular ARs, they make a handful of different stuff, and they even make some NFA stuff. So they're not just an upstart garage manufacturer. I would have probably expected to have a little bit more consistency on the finish of the way this ended up looking, but it wasn't a big deal. I'll clean it up. And again, this isn't a $2,000 Desert Eagle. This is a $400 get off me gun. So let's talk about this trigger. It's got a little toggle, part of the inertial drop safety though I don't think in this case it's really more of the inertial piece of it is it's to avoid snagging the triggers and having the triggers get pulled. It's got this kind of extended trigger guard because it is an extended trigger and I'm not going to pull it yet, I will in a bit, but you're supposed to put two fingers on it. This is, so you kind of hold it like this. This is the Gen 2, so it has about a nine pound trigger. The original generation was designed the same but its trigger was 20 pounds or more, depending on who you asked. This one you can actually pull with one finger, but the other, the other one you really couldn't. But what I do find is the trigger is relatively long, and as you're pulling it, which again, I'm not gonna pull it yet, but as you're pulling it, you've got your fingers here, it tends to wanna to bring this finger down across this one, so you gotta kinda of do this, and you can't do a regular grip, you almost end up having to teacup it, because otherwise the fingers that you're using for the other part of the grip are in the way, so gripping this is kind of strange. They do make an extension you can put on this to give it more of a three finger grip, but that kind of defeats the purpose of this. This thing's supposed to be small, short, you'll know, be able to stuff this anywhere. By the time you start extending it, maybe you should just start looking at a regular revolver. Now this is rimfire, and let's see if I can get the light in there enough to show it to you. You'll see, okay, that did it. There's the two firing pins, and they are hammer operated. There's an internal hammer. And it does use a transfer bar, transfer bar safety, so this is drop safe. And they're round firing pins. They're unlike the flat ones that you tend to see in a lot of 22s. So I'm going to put some snap caps in it, because it is rimfire. 
I'm going to use these aluminum snap caps. It does come with this little plastic snap cap ring. And it's not really rated for dry fire, which is typical of 22s. I tend not to use the plastic ones because they tend to get hammered down. And when they hammer down, they become ineffective and you don't necessarily know it. Whereas the aluminum ones tend to be a little more durable. So it'll take me a second to load up these dummy rounds so that I can then pull the trigger. They do make a uh, speed loader for it because it is a little bit cumbersome to load, which is typical of a revolver like this. But now I got it loaded up so I can pull the trigger. And before I pull the trigger, surprisingly this thing actually has sights and they're actually decent. Uh, they're red dots. They're, it's not a red dot as in an optic, but they are red colored dots. Uh, the only problem is they're a darker red on black, so they do have a tendency to gray out a little bit on the range depending on the lighting. But the fact that they're sights and not just a gutter is unusual on a gun like this. But I'm going to go ahead and pull this trigger now that I have these snap caps loaded. And by the way, one thing you have to watch out with this, due to the shape of it and everything else, if I just pick it up and not pay attention, I have a habit of wanting to do this, just picking it up without thinking about it. And you can see with my finger is how badly that's going to end for me. So you have to make sure, absolutely sure, that you use these two fingers so that you don't have anything up here in the cylinder gap or you're going to get burned. It's only 22, but it's still going to be a real unpleasant experience to have that happen. So now that I've got my fingers in the proper position and i got snap caps in it, as I pull the trigger, of course I depress that toggle, and you can see how long the trigger is, and there's multiple stacking points. Reset, of course, it's a revolver, is all the way out. I'm going to do it one more time. So as I pull it, right now it's kind of stacking, it's getting heavier, and then it suddenly got lighter, and now it's getting heavier again, and it feels different at this point, and then it breaks. It made it rather difficult to keep it on target, so we're attempting to do bullseye accuracy with this, which we know it's not designed for, but that's what we were attempting to do. And it was rather difficult to keep it right on target. But the way they say you're going to use this gun is that you can empty the cylinder in three seconds because you're going to do this. Now you notice at one point it didn't, it didn't stroke because I didn't let it all the way out. So trying to do that real fast thing, you've got a probability of missing a stroke, having to let back out and try again. But that's really what they're, what they're targeting this for, is that you can empty this cylinder of eight rounds in four pulls, because again, it shoots two at a time, in three seconds. Really trying to give that threat a good reason to get off you, which is really what this thing's all about. A couple interesting things about this, just before we wrap up. Number one, they did put sights on it, which is nice, but the sight radius is shorter than it could have been. They could have put the front sight forward, they could have put the rear sight back. Not that it probably would have made a whole lot of difference in the overall accuracy. It's just kind of interesting. It's 7075 aluminum, so it's an alloy frame. Uh, it's a steel cylinder and steel barrels. And the barrels are not lined. Now, I just popped all the uh, snap caps out. But one thing I will note is I'm going to put one in there and I'm going to hold it in there and show you that the ejector is too short to push the case all the way out. So if you get a case that tends to flare or it starts to get a little hot, you may end up finding that you have to reach in there and flick them out. I get why, because there's just not a lot of space there for a longer ejector. But one thing to think about with something like this, they may have speed loaders available, but you're not going to be loading this thing in any kind of a hurry. You may be able to unload it quickly, but I don't see you loading it quickly. Let's see if I can get some light into these barrels. Don't know if I can or not. There we go. See their standard rifling. The machining quality on them is decent. I wouldn't say stellar, but it's not bad either. A little bit of tool chatter you can see on that bit of rifling. But from an accuracy potential, you know, a little bit of tool chatter on the rifling isn't going to be the biggest reason why you're not going to be able to bullseye with this. But again, that's not the intent. The aluminum frame makes it light. The steel barrels, and, and they're non-lined. So a lot of 22 barrels use this kind of a steel liner and then either an alloy or some other type of material for the barrel. These appear to be steel all the way through, so they've taken a piece of steel billet and they've kind of bored in the barrel. So you should have good durability and good longevity. We did notice this got hot while we were running it, which I would expect, but it didn't get ex ridiculously hot. And so we were shooting this pretty continuously, firing it and unloading it, and it, it worked quite well. 
more than enough stability for the probably the one wheel that you're going to put through it. A couple other things just worth noting on their website they have a number of accessories. You know this rubber grip I think they've got different variants of the grip. They've got that extension. They've got holsters for it which you're not going to be able to fit this into most other revolver holsters because of this and this long extended trigger. So if you're interested in one of these, you can actually order it on their website and they'll ship it to an FFL, no different than ordering it anywhere else. Of course, you're going to pay MSRP at that point. But you can get accessories right from their site, which is kind of important because I don't see most manufacturers spending a lot of time making holsters and other accessories for these. It's kind of a specialty thing. So if you choose one of these, you can get ankle holsters, kydec holsters, pouch style holsters. One thing I will say, ignore all the stuff about the trigger safety and the length of the trigger and the pull and the, uh, the guard. Put this in a holster. It, all it would take, and I can't do it all the way now because I've emptied it to snap caps, but all it would take is something to catch on this and have enough force to pull it that you, know, you could have an unpleasantness. Don't put any gun, regardless of whatever safety features that are designed into it, into a carry service without a holster. This is kind of designed that maybe you don't need a holster, but I don't I don't go along with that. Use a holster. It's the safe thing to do. And a couple other things. It keeps the gun clean. It keeps obstructions out of here. Keeps it in the position so that when you go for it, it's right where you expect it. There's a lot of advantages to having a holster. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and click that bell to get notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter. We're kind of all over the place. And thank you.